starting. Okay, so this is March 8th, and welcome to Matthew Melton's Democracy Show. Getting set up for the show. It's going to be a really big show tonight. I can feel it. I'm, I'm sitting here with Harmony, the board operator, and, and engineer and producer. And she's a good person to be with, I'll tell you. I am very thrilled to have her as a producer. Okay, first thing I need to do is uh, creating a, a, a closer for the show. After I get the seat right. <laughs> So just move this over. Uh, got the intro done last week. It's good enough for the moment. I can redo that later. <clears throat> okay. And here we are. Matthew Melton's Democracy Show. March 8th, 2020. Okay. All right, this is a special closer for show two. So I'll pro I'm going to have almost the same one to redo. Cool. Can you bring that mic to fill it? Okay. There we are. Perfect. Okay, tell me when you're ready, Harmony, and I will, I will do the first, the first reading on this and... Hopefully I'll get it right within three tries. I'm totally ready, but I do need the mic to be just a little bit more in front of you. Yeah, just because otherwise it sounds a little bit like you're far away. Okay, so that's so if that's if that's good, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna go for it. Here it goes. Thank you for joining us on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. on KKNW. That's 10:50 on your AM dial. 11:50. Yeah. It's okay. Goofed it up. No worries. Okay. Guess I should know where I work, right? <laughs> I oh, should know where I work. I work in Bellevue. I know that. Okay. And and take two. Thank you for joining us on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. on KKNW. That's 11.50 on your AM dial for live Made in America Alternative Talk Radio at its finest. Do you like my venue of Alternative Talk? Be a sponsor in a non-traditional sense. Please find my account on GoFundMe and Kickstarter. I'm a self-funded show host. How would you like to sponsor me in a small way? All is appreciated. I'll be developing the show and scheduling, scheduling more regular show dates and more hours of live alternative talk. If you would like to see a replay, I'll post the show up on YouTube on my channel, Matthew Melton's Democracy Show on YouTube.com. That's Matthew Melton's Democracy Show on YouTube.com. Hit me up with all of your comments, ideas, hellos, and keep the other to a minimum, please. I'm Matthew Melton on Facebook and Matthew Melton's Democracy Show at Gmail. That's all lowercase. Once again, Matthew Melton's Democracy Show at Gmail. And I will work continuously to answer all of your questions. And I'll always make an effort to bring up the best questions and answers uh, on the recap uh, of the following show. Uh, if, if not on radio, on my YouTube channel um, on the following Sunday without using your name, unless you ask me to use a first name or a pseudo name. Uh, tune in next Sunday for, ter for a terrific show uh, on the new ideas uh, that, are, that, are, that are coming up in media uh, for foolproofing, uh, gerrymandering, uh, and also election meddling uh, of our state and national election polls. Because... America, the greatest democracy in the world, deserves the best and most reliable and freest election polls in the world without fear of election meddling or gerrymandering. Do you agree? Tune in, and I'll be there. Cut. I, I know that was choppy, but let's 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 hear, let's hear it once. Thanks for joining us on Sunday evening, 6 p.m. on KKNW. That's 11.50 on your AM dial for live Made in America Alternative Talk Radio at its finest. Do you like my venue of Alternative Talk? 
Please sponsor in a non-traditional sense. Please find my account on GoFundMe and Kickstarter. I'm a self-funded show host. How would you like to sponsor me in a small way? All is appreciated. I'll be developing the show and scheduling, scheduling more regular show dates and more hours of live alternative talk. If you would like to see a replay, I'll post the show up on YouTube on my channel, Matthew Melton's Democracy Show on YouTube.com. That's Matthew Melton's Democracy Show on YouTube.com. Hit me up with all of your comments, ideas, hellos, and keep the other to a minimum, please. I'm Matthew Melton on Facebook and Matthew Melton's Democracy Show at Gmail. That's all lowercase. Once again, Matthew Melton's Democracy Show at Gmail. And I will work continuously to answer all of your questions. And I'll always make an effort to bring up the best questions and answers uh, on the recap uh, of the following show, uh, if, if not on radio, on my YouTube channel um, on the following Sunday without using your name, unless you ask me to use a first name or a pseudo name. Uh, tune in next Sunday for, ter for a terrific show uh, on the new ideas uh, that are, that are that are coming up in media uh, for foolproofing, uh, gerrymandering, uh, and also election meddling uh, of our state and national election polls. Because America, the greatest democracy in the world, deserves the best and most reliable and freest election polls in the world without fear of election meddling or gerrymandering. Do you agree? Tune in, and I'll be there. Okay, so how how horrible did that sound? <laughs> Not bad. Um, it is. Let's see. No, I said uh, too many times. That's all right. Uh, so it's about two minutes. So yeah, I'll stop you two minutes sooner than I would have before. So at about fifty-seven. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll well, count down to fifty-seven. You know what's acceptable in radio. Um, I I know that I was choppy. If you think that's okay for this one, we can I I can always I can always redo it for yeah. the next one. No, yeah, I, I think it's totally fine. Yeah, I, I I I I as a an artist will see every mistake that I make. No worries, no worries. <laughs> you're just learning. It's, you know, it's gotta it's gonna you're gonna build your skills. Uh, my you my mother will be very happy to see that I got a haircut because she said <laughs> she said you know. You need a haircut. And, Do you want um, the same kind of like music intro on this? Or? Yeah, but you can be creative because you know you have the experience, and I'm 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 just I'm just you know calling out my my best thoughts and ideas. Yeah. Do and you want the same like that at the beginning, or do you want to like into the intro? I like that. I like that intro. Okay. We can stick with it for the month of March. How's okay. that? For and, the outro. Yeah, and then okay. for the outro. So and and then uh, then what what is there another name for the for the for the closer? Outro. The outro. The outro is the closer. Yes. Okay, outro is joining us on Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us on Sunday evening at six PM on I'm very impressed that you're able to, to get me that um, <laughs> outro because I was I was imagining this Three years ago, and I thought, oh, if I ever had my own radio show, this is how I would do it. Yeah. And and then I I, I looked just briefly. I kind of looked around on the internet for the opportunity to start a, any kind of a radio broadcast, and I just couldn't find anything. Then they started advertising YouTube a lot. Uh, mm. You know, start your own channel, and I started into that. And then, uh, yep, somebody somebody was over and they were playing AM 1150 and I heard your right. your your famous advertisement and I said, "You know what? I'm going to I'm going to apply." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Here we are. So, um, so how how amazing. So you still want to do the um the spots right after the intro and then at 6:30 the yeah, let's let's keep it right in format. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not solid enough to to try a lot of uh, changes just yet. Okay, no, I, so I, we'll do it right I will I will I will later later in the 
you know, after the, probably the first month, I'll be willing to do a lot of change. Oh, no, I think it's good to keep the commercials where they are, honestly, to kind of follow a clock in every show. That way people kind of know. Um, so I would consider keeping that, like, I just want to confirm that I'm going to be playing them at, right after your intro and then at 6.30. Oh yeah. Okay. Hold on. Forty-seven. All right. So we're getting close. Close to showtime. How exciting! How exciting! And uh, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. Uh, oops. Formatted. It's gonna be so much easier if I just get the heading correct instead of trying to read in eleven font. Oh sure. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna try to enlarge it one time. I got a few minutes. All right, if I get that right that time. Okay, ooh. This is Matthew Melton, your host on this evening's show, and I have a lot, a lot of exciting Super Tuesday news to cover. So getting started, I want to talk about Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, Democratic Party frontrunners. Uh, that's exciting. And so is former Democratic candidate uh, for president, Senator Amy Kl Klobuchar's surprise slip up in Michigan on Saturday, March 7th, that she's excited to join Frontrunner Joe Biden's ticket as a vice president, uh, vice president, uh, oh, which what word should I use? Should I use team, teammate, frontrunner, running mate? For more information regarding this program, WD Muhammad and guests, please contact who are Before she reportedly corrected, what is being called in the press a verbal slip up? Well, here on Live Talk Radio, we know about those surprise verbal slip ups and how to recant those oops remarks. They were not supposed to come out in live broadcast. <clears throat> well, now we know Joe Biden's little secret. Has he been secretly planning? Has he been secretly planning? He's been secretly planning to add his front runner to add Amy Klobuchar to his front runner's ticket. To add Amy Klobuchar to his frontrunner's ticket. Well, we don't know, do we? But that'll be exciting. Being. This is Matthew Melton, your host on this evening's show. And I have a lot of exciting Super Tuesday news to cover. So getting started, I want to talk about candidate Bernie Sanders and candidate Joe Biden, the Democratic Party frontrunners. Well, here in live talk radio, we know about those surprise 
verbal slip-ups, and how to recant those oops remarks that were not supposed to come out in live broadcast. Well, now we know who Joe Biden's little secret. We know something about Joe Biden's little secret. And Canada Joe Biden might have a little secret. Clean that up quite a bit. There we go. That sounds much better. <clears throat> He's been secretly planning to add former front runner, former former candidate. Amy Klobuchar, who is senator. Amy Klobuchar to his Front runner's ticket. Good evening, audience, voters, taxpayers, friends, Americans, and countrymen. In Seattle, Mercer Island, Bellevue, Redmond, Issaquah, and on the east side, and I-5 corridors, many local cities, welcoming tonight's Matthew Meltzer's Democracy Show on AM 1150, featuring Liberal Democratic talk show host Matthew Oh, Meltzer, I need the numbers. Broadcasting live. Oh, they're right there. Nights, from the 4 5 with his inductive and often insightful reasoning skills, political commentary, and opinions on a wide range of American and international political topics. and Aha, the only important numbers. media topics, which are not political in nature, but still in current media. I hope that you're happy to be listening to American Talk Radio at its finest, because I'm happy to be here as your host this evening. So get ready, and I'll be right back. AM Talk listeners in Seattle, Bellevue, Redmond, Issaquah, Greater East Side, and I-5 Corridor. This is Matthew Melton with Matthew Melton's Democracy Show, here on Sunday nights at AM 1150 KK Northwest. And do you need moving help right now? Well, if you do, call allitco.com. That's all lowercase, H-A-U-L-I-T-C-O.com. That's right, allitco.com for your local move, moving help and also your small interior moves. Call callitco.com at 425-753-1743 for friendly, affordable moving service. Use our backs, save yours. But sometimes last minute moves are okay. Just call and ask at 425-753-1743. That's callitco.com and ask for Dave. We're moving people to new places, so let's get moving. Hello listeners of KKNW, that's 1150 on your AM dial, here on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. And did you want to know who is tops in home organizing and is a local cleaning service in Seattle? Try Seattle Home Organizing Wiz. That's Seattle Home Organizing Wiz at 206-430-0240. And you'll be impressed by the courteous and hardworking staff who want to take on all of your tough jobs as well as one-time appointments and weekly and bi-monthly and monthly scheduled payments. Seattle Home Organizing Wiz also wants to organize your home and office. Call them at 206 430 0240. That's 206 430 0240. Seattle Home Organizing Wiz. That's all lowercase. And ask for that you know. Find out the latest about your favorite shows on Alternative Talk 1150. Check out 1150kknw.com. You do need your headphones. Good. Good evening. This is Matthew Melton, your host, and I have a lot of exciting Super Tuesday news to cover. So getting started, I want to talk about candidate Bernie Sanders and candidate... Joe Biden, 
Democratic Party frontrunners. And that's exciting. And so was former candidate, Democratic uh, candidate for president, Senator Amy Klobuchar's surprise slip up in Michigan on Saturday, March 7th, uh, uh, that she was excited to join frontrunner Joe Biden's ticket uh, as the vice president running mate before she reportedly corrected that and recanted it. Uh, in live radio, uh, we call that a verbal slip up and uh, well, here in live talk radio, we know about those surprise verbal slip ups and how to recant those oops remarks uh, that were not supposed to come out in live broadcast. Well, now we know something and candidate Joe Biden might have a little secret. Uh, has he been secretly planning to add former candidate Senator Amy Klobuchar to his front runner's ticket? Well, I guess we will find out. Uh, That'll be a historical moment if he does uh, to have a to have a woman as a as a running mate, and I I think uh, it was it was pretty pretty uh, hard to ignore that uh, this was also a a race that included a homosexual uh, uh, candidate that actually made it to to the primaries to Super Tuesday that would be Pete Buttigieg. And he has dropped out, and I had some terrific political satire planned uh, for that name. However, since, since he's dropped out, I'll just say thank you, Pete Buttigieg, for running as a Democrat. And I'm, I'm sure we'll, you're a young, young man, and I'm sure that we will hear lots more from you in the future. Uh, so I would say, uh, I would say, uh, I'm sure that uh, as a possible future Biden running mate uh, on the ticket, uh, uh, that Amy Klobuchar uh, challenging Republican and POTUS Donald Trump would be a pretty exciting match. So here we are, and in in the. Uh, Super Tuesday running match. Go to, go to station break. Hello listeners of KKNW, that's 1150 on your AM dial, here on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. And did you want to know who is cops and home organizing? And as a local cleaning service in Seattle. Try Seattle Home Organizing Wiz. Okay. Try Seattle Home Organizing Wiz at 206. Four three zero zero two four zero, and you'll get okay. impressed by the courteous hardworking staff. Are you good? Staff. Yeah. Hold on. All of your tough jobs, as well as one-time appointments, and weekly and bi-monthly and monthly scheduled meetings. Seattle Home Organizing Wiz also wants to organize your home and office. Call them at two zero six four three zero zero two four zero. That's two zero six four three zero zero two four zero. Seattle. Home organizing wins. That's all lowercase. And ask for the you not. Good evening, AM Talk listeners from Seattle, Bellevue, Redmond, Issaquah, Greater East Side, and I 5 Corridor. This is Matthew Melton with Matthew Melton's Democracy Show. Here on Sunday nights at AM 1150 KK Northwest. And do you need moving help right now? Well, if you do, call allitco.com. That's all lowercase. H A U L I T. Co.com. That's right. Call it co.com for your local move, moving help, and also your small interior move. Call call it co.com at 425 753 1743 for friendly, affordable moving service. About 30 Use seconds. Backs, save your okay. If you need more time, I can give you more time. I think, I think it's all right. I, I just I lost my place. I, sure. I really I really have to rehearse this much, and and that's 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 what I'm learning here. So. Yep. Well, I can go to break whenever you need to. So. Okay. Talk radio with a purpose. Alternative talk 1150. Ready? Okay, I'm back. Last week. Senator and candidate Bernie Sanders was sounding a little weak when he made remarks alluding to that should he be tied with frontrunner candidate Joe Biden, 
that he would not divide the Democratic Party. And uh, that alluded to uh, that he would drop out of the race should it, should it be a close tie. Uh, uh, perhaps he was alluding to when he was running against frontrunner Hillary Clinton in 2017, and she bumped him out of the way, and uh, I'm sure that, that he's still struggling with that. I don't know if he would actually do that, and I'm wondering what your opinion is. Would frontrunner Bernie Sanders drop out of the race if he was in a close match? And he is in a close match with candidate Joe Biden. Our number here is 425-373-5527 and toll free in Western Washington, 888-298-5569. Give me a call. So what do you think? Do you think candidate Bernie Sanders is still a solid political candidate for the Democratic Party? Or is Michael Bloomberg's money going to push Michael Bloomberg past Bernie and discourage him into conceding the race. Anyways, we're going to move on here. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, Senator Elizabeth, well, candidate Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I think she was a terrific uh, front runner. I'm sorry that she dropped out. She maybe perhaps made a Freudian slip, and it's okay. Uh, I don't know what you meant about Senator Bernie Sanders uh, bullying her, but I think that in a political race that, that it's expected, it's not the same as the workplace. One should expect that, that in, a, in, a, in a heated debate political race that, that there is going to be bullyism. Um, it's kind of kind of uh, surprising, I'll say that, and uh, we'll 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 see. I I no longer anticipate seeing her as joining uh, Bernie Sanders' ticket as a running mate, which I thought you know perhaps was a possibility, and I I do see the potential uh, for a lot more women in in our nation's future as. Front runners, running mates, if if not uh, the the front runners themselves, because as we slowly move towards a eliminating the electoral college and a, and a truer democracy, in my view, uh, women will dominate uh, the election system. More women vote. There are more women, and my understanding is that the millennials uh, could rock the vote, and. If the millennials are rocking the vote, it's, it's going to be millennial millennial women. It's, they've proven themselves to, to, to vote more often. It's, it's, it's a statistic. It's true. And all of these uh, front runners follow those statistics. So they're going to pay attention. They're going to choose a, choose a running mate that's going to appeal to the population uh, of the American voter. And the women, women just seem to make good sense in 2020. So... I'll be interested in seeing who Joe Biden actually brings in as his running mate. And if, uh, if Bernie hangs in there, then, then I'm sure he'll find someone good. Anyways, uh, moving along. Uh, I like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she is far left and, and she's young, probably... Probably not going to work for Bernie Sanders, but I just wanted to bring that up that she looks good and uh, I, I know that she has adapted to Bernie's and has many of her own far left views uh, of, of socialism, social guarantee, social democracy, uh, what's, what's new, what's modern in America, what's not right, what is far left. That's right, and millennials do hate Trump's politics. That's out in the mainstream media. Uh, Ocasio Cortez might might be the right woman for the job. Just thought I'd throw that out there on the table. 
And next I'd like to get more into Super Tuesday, but uh, I'm going to instead take a little break and talk about the uh, COVID-19 outbreak here in Washington. Uh, it's a recap from last week's show uh, with more than 19, more than 18 deaths. It may be 19. I'm, I'm, I'm going with what I heard in mainstream media this afternoon, what I read online. It was 18 deaths and 17 in King County. Uh, we're very close to the location of the Life Care Center in Kirkland, Washington, where 17 of those deaths have occurred. And I'm not panicking or living in fear, but after visiting the grocery store this morning, when I saw a man sneeze, I pulled out my surgical mask and put it on and then proceeded to be the only shopper in the grocery store with my, within my own eye shot that was wearing any kind of protective mask. Although mine was a cheap model, not a good one like an N95 or N99. But I do want one of those. Also, there are cheap models of colloidal silver impregnated protective masks that are widely used in Asia, I'm told but also that they're very hard and impossible to get right now because uh, even though the Surgeon General said, don't worry, don't go out and buy up all the masks, uh, apparently that's what's happening. And Americans, we are not the only shoppers. This is the whole world's market and people, other people from, from foreign nations shop off of our market as well as their own. So it's, it's the world market and people might be panicking I'm not going to say Canada, but just in another country that, that, that are able to, to buy from, from our country. And they're still going to use up the supply, even if Americans aren't buying them up. So I've seen a few students wearing masks around the University of Washington, where I live. And uh, none of the checkout people at the grocery store were wearing masks. And I mentioned it to one checkout person, and she snapped right back at me and told me... Uh, it was not going to protect her anyways. Well, I'm too polite to say something like this directly to her, but she's been facing the public all day, and we have had a COVID-19 outbreak in downtown Seattle. It was at a Starbucks. So, so it's around, and the, the COVID-19 tends to, to seed itself in mysteriously. Uh, doesn't, it doesn't linger around an epicenter necessarily, but if you're around that epicenter, uh, everyone, every one of those cruise ships uh, have have proven that that it's it will spread from the epicenter as well as just mysteriously seeding itself around. Um, anyways, I I do want to say where there's smoke, there's got to be fire, and I kept that one under my hat. Uh, so we cannot know who has been in the vicinity of carriers, uh, but anyone working. As a grocery store line checker, obviously, is going to be encountering many, many more people than than us, right? So, I'm still promoting the idea that emergency legislation from our terrific governor Jay Inslee is still drastically needed, uh, and we need to start making it a part of our state of emergency in uh, in Washington. Uh, that grocery stores, restaurant employees and food handlers and, and those who package food should be wearing uh, good enough masks. Uh, I'm, I'm reading the N95 and N99 are, are great masks if you can get one. They're, they're not terribly expensive, but I am still using a pretty ordinary cheap, cheapo mask. Uh, also, the Army surplus masks are, are decent. I, I had one when I was in the Army. I believe it was the M19A1, and that's a hooded mask. It's big. It's ugly. It'll definitely protect you. I, I had the the old school army bio warfare training with that mask, and you can learn how to use it. And it cleans up pretty easily with bleach water. So if you can't get the sandy wipes, uh, the old school cheap way of of decontaminating something was was bleach water. And I'm not going to tell you how much bleach to use, 
I would I would definitely look research that before I, I started making my own bleach water and, and touching myself with it in any way. Uh, but it's definitely meant to be used on the mask, not your skin. So moving on, uh, I think uh, I think uh, anyone riding a metro bus or light rail in Seattle should definitely be protected. It would be prudent, and although the Surgeon General has said, don't worry about wearing a mask, my friends and I have agreed that if I'm wearing a mask and I cough or sneeze, I'm, I'm going to project fewer droplets whether they're infected with anything or not. And also, if they are wearing a mask, they're going to protect themselves. So I can protect them, they can protect themselves, and vice versa. That's something that I expected to hear the Surgeon General say that he did not say, but that's his decision. He's Surgeon General. I'm a radio talk show host. Uh, so now I'm going to say something on the air that I ordinarily would not say, especially without a doctor to validate my claim but I'm, I'm using a, a real heavy disclaimer on this one. This is a worldwide emergency, and I just read that the deaths from the COVID-19 are about 3,656. That's the last time I read it, it could be higher now. Uh, the infected numbers are above 107,000, and 70% uh, of the people polled believe that COVID-19 could be a bioweapon, and that's shocking. So whether it actually uh, came from, a, from a, some, some, some animal testing origin, whether those animals were ever sold on a, in, the, in the live uh, animal markets of China, you know, who can prove it? I haven't, I haven't read any, any, any provable reports on that. It's all hearsay. But uh, it's possible this, this, this virus is a mutator. It could have been engineered to do that. I'm, I'm sure that they didn't release it on purpose, but it's out there now. Uh, if you don't want to hear this hypothesis that I have about COVID-19 treatment right now, change the channel. That's right, change the channel, because this is one time that I feel it's prudent to make a statement. Uh, although I cannot validate this, I'm going to make the statement anyways. And... I wanted a medical doctor to call in as a guest tonight and to corroborate my statement or debunk me. Uh, couldn't find a medical doctor on short notice, and that's, that's a bummer, but I've, I've had an epiphany. I want to share it. It's a, it's a declared emergency. Um, so if there's anyone out there in the listening audience that would like to call in after I, I give out this information and... and Either, either support me or ask me questions or, or debunk me, please do. 425-373-5527 and 888-298-5569 are the numbers. So I'm moving, moving right along. I'm going to get into this. Um, so like I said, I was, a, I was a, an Army medical corpsman a long time ago. And this was back at the end of the Cold War. And at one time when I was in college, I was reading about cancer research, and I, I read about a pretty interesting drug. Um, reflecting back to when I had biowarfare training in the U.S. Army, I can remember the old atropine injectors and how those worked, and just, just a quick layman's rundown from what I can remember about those. The atropine would push the toxin through your system rapidly. So it would cause you to so rapidly metabolize that toxin or that chemical warfare agent or bio agent that you had uh, come in contact with that, that you would, it was, it made it survivable. So not, not a cure, but, but it was, it was a, an on the spot military treatment uh, that all cold war infantry soldiers carried, the frontline soldiers carried it, uh, and it was, it was an injection, uh, a push button injection stick. You put it down to your leg and you push the button and injected it. And the, uh, the injector uh, did the work, did the, the vaccine in there, pushed, pushed that toxin out of your body. Um, I understand uh, 
this coming Monday, March 9th, they are going to try some experimental vaccine for COVID-19 in Seattle. But since it's a mutating virus, I understand that uh, the, the hemoglobin changes. And, and forgive me if I got that word wrong, because uh, once again, I'm a radio show host. I'm going by what I'm reading and hearing uh, in the press. So moving on to, uh, there's a doctor in Houston, Texas, uh, who was previously close to a vaccine in 2016 that may have worked against SARS uh, years before, but was defunded. His name is Dr. Peter Holtz from the Center for Vaccine Development at Texas Children's Hospital. And he's the Dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College in Houston, Texas. And I'll try reaching out to him uh, by snail mail this week to introduce my hypothesis and concept to him. Uh, you can never know if something that starts out purely as hypothetical can become viable and provable unless you try it, I do say. So then moving on to, here's my disclaimer again. Since I'm not a doctor, I don't have a doctor to validate my claim. This is just an idea that I had and, and I'd like to share it. I think it's an emergency, the emergency validates uh, that, I'm, that I'm giving this information out over the air is a potential, uh, I'm not gonna say treatment, but it has potential, how's that? And, and, I'm, and we're, we're on the subject of COVID-19. And uh, since it has potential uh, for COVID-19, and then, then it would also have potential for any flu or virus, uh, as, as I remembered reading in an article. So the article that I read uh, about the Blue scorpion uh, was in the in the field of cancer treatment. It's it's a pretty widely available treatment, and it was discovered accidentally when an older Cuban man, who was a cancer patient, fell through the decrepit floorboards of his very small house in Cuba. Uh, apparently, he was sitting on his front porch. He was stung several times by a Caribbean blue scorpion. It's called. Ropolaris juncius, or a scorpion azul. Uh, that would be blue scorpion in Cuban. And if I got those pronunciations poorly, then I will just say it one more time. Ropolaris juncius, and it's two words. And uh, anyways, he was miraculously cured of cancer. Uh, Cuban medical researchers later linked his miraculous cancer recovery to the venom of the blue scorpion, which is native to Cuba, and uh, they developed that into into a uh, well, it's a it's a, a, a an injectable. Uh, I don't want to use the word vaccine, but it's 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 an injectable medicine now, and it's called Cuba's miracle drug. It's popular for pain medication in Cuba as well. And I found it available uh, at an American Cancer Treatment Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so later, later it was synthesized into a cancer drug. Uh, it's currently sold under. This is one of the brand names. It's called Vitatax, and I'm not going to give out the name of the website, but it's on one that we all know, popular American retail online retail website. If, where I found it priced at $195. I'm not an investor in this, nor do I have any, nor do I, do, nor do I plan on ever selling any of this. I'm just giving this out as an example. It's Vitatox, and it's the, the synthesized venom of, of the Ropolaris ginseus, uh, which is a Cuban blue scorpion. So it's a Caribbean blue scorpion. So... I can remember reading that this drug worked by speeding up your immune system to such great heights that in some cases a cancer patient uh, can and does beat cancer. So my epiphany was simple. Uh, why not also try it on viruses? Uh, there are more than, oh, I think it's more than 100 million people in northern Italy that are currently being uh, 
quarantined, and although although I'm, I don't feel real comfortable in giving this information out, and and on, on, on the subject of COVID nineteen, I I have to consider that it's an emergency. You should just know that so I'm not a doctor. You know, I I can't guarantee any of this. This is this is just stuff that I want to share that I, I feel it's prudent. Um, sorry that I can't have a doctor here to corroborate any of this. Uh, if a doctor would like to call in and, and talk about it, then I'm going to give out the number 425-373-5527 and uh, toll free in Western Washington, 888-298-5569. And moving right along, uh, go to station break. Hello listeners of KKNW, that's 1150 on your AM dial, here on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. And if you want to know who is tops in home organizing, it is a local cleaning service in Seattle. Try Seattle Home Organizing Wiz. That's Seattle Home Organizing Wiz at 206-430-0240. And you'll be impressed by the courteous and hardworking staff. You want to take on all of your tough jobs, as well as one-time appointments, and weekly and bi-monthly and monthly scheduled cleans. Seattle Home Organizing Wiz also wants to organize your home and office. Call them at 206-430-0240. That's 206-430-0240. Seattle's Home Organizing Wiz. That's all lowercase. And ask for the email. Good evening, AM Talk listeners in Seattle, Bellevue, Redmond, Issaquah. Greater East Side and I-5 Corridor. This is Matthew Melton of Matthew Melton's Marketing Show. Here on Sunday nights at AM 1150. And do you need moving help right now? Well, if you do, call allitco.com. That's all lowercase. H-A-U-L-I-T-C-O dot com. That's right. Allitco.com for your local move, moving help, and also your small interior move. Call allitco.com at 425 725- 753-1743 for friendly affordable moving service. Use our backs, save yours. And sometimes last minute moves are okay. Just call and ask at 425-753-1743. That's okay. callandco.com and ask for Dave. We're moving people to new places. So let's get moving. Broaden your horizons. You'll be amazed at all the Come topics we cover seconds. on Alternative Talk 1150. Seconds. Okay, I'm back, and this is Matthew Melton's Democracy Show, and we're on the subject of COVID-19. I would say uh, I'm interested in taking any calls. I would uh, like to thank anyone and everyone for listening to my hypothesis that I gave out, which was the blue scorpion venom uh, sold under the name of Vitatox. It's available in America, and... It's used in treatment of, for pain in Cuba and also is a cancer drug. And it's, it's been successful. Uh, my, my epiphany is that, is, is it possible that this, this could uh, speed up your immune system enough to, to beat a virus like COVID-19? And if you're out there in the listening audience and you'd like to call in and talk about this, I would be happy to take some calls right now. Four two five three seven three five five two seven. So, if I'm not getting any calls, I'm just going to move on to the next subject, and that's just going to be back to Super Tuesday. I'm a big Bernie fan. I would say uh, I'm interested in Joe Biden is a front runner candidate. Not so much as Bernie, but I. I like Joe Biden. He was a terrific vice president when he was uh, President Obama's uh, vice president. And if he becomes a, a president uh, our, and in our, in our Democratic Party's leader, I will support him in every way that I can. I am not too thrilled about 
uh, former front-running candidate Michael Bloomberg joining him, uh, joining his camp, that's what I meant to say, joining his camp. Uh, he's bringing in maybe all of the money that front-running candidate Joe Biden never wanted, and I don't foresee that he's going, that the front-running candidate Joe Biden is going to have to send his uh, son Hunter around to other countries with a tin cup uh, asking for donations anymore. Uh, so you've, you've probably heard about the the 1.5 billion uh, that he was accused of, of uh, getting from the Chinese, and then uh, there was there was another another scandal with Ukraine. I don't know exactly how much money was involved. Definitely not 1.5 billion. Uh, so this, this uh, former frontrunner, Joe Biden, is uh, tied to the Clinton Foundation, and the Clinton Foundation is, is uh, close to the Bilderberg Group. Uh, these are European oligarchs. And for my next topic, I'm going to put this out on the table. Do we want these wealthy oligarchs influencing our American political elections. I'm sure that I don't, but I'd like to hear other Americans' opinions on this. What do you think? How do you feel about wealthy Europeans who are private interests? They are living under a different law, and they potentially have a front man in Michael Bloomberg, who's who was running for president himself, who was a who was a famous mayor, and 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 it was in a in in a in our in our New York City, our, our one of our nation's largest major cities, if if not the largest, I don't know what the largest major city in America is, uh, could be New York City. Um, he's someone who is not very popular with uh, blacks and Latinos, and. Uh, one great thing that uh, Elizabeth Warren did notably was was called him out as a as a womanizer, and she 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 basically got him out of the way so that Joe Biden could 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 move up, and he did. So I have to thank uh, Elizabeth Warren for that. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. That was the, that was Michael Bloomberg is someone who should not have been. Uh, in, in the Democratic uh, primaries, in my opinion. He is someone who bought his way in, and although he has the, the money to participate in the Democratic race, um, I'm glad that he's out, and I hope that Joe Biden considers the fact that, hey, he's, he's in with the foreign oligarchs. He's in with the big money from Europe. Um, does he really want this man's reputation following his campaign. And that's that's what it's going to be. And of course, people are offering big financing, are gonna ask for big favors in return. What are, what are the big favors? They're going to be favors that were thought up by European oligarchs, it's whatever their interests are. Uh, the Bilderbergs are supporters of Agenda 21. You can look that up online, read about it, it's on YouTube. Uh, they they'll tell you all about it. It's it has to do with lowering the population, uh, maybe not in legal ways. I'm not going to say that I'm an expert at it, but uh, Agenda 21 is is one of one of their their notable uh, uh, agendas that they're they're following, and uh, so the Clinton Foundation, New York's uh, one of New York's largest and most notable uh, events. It's an annual event, and they, they get together and they talk about uh, world policies, and it's it's with these these uh, wealthy foreign oligarchs. That's that's what they call them in Russia. Probably don't call them oligarchs in Western Europe, but uh, I like to use that word just because it, it's it's kind of kind of kind of telling people what my opinion of these of these wealthy Europeans are. Um, Especially if they're going to start interfering with the U.S. election, that was something that I expected from the Cold War Russians and the Cold War Soviets. And 
yes, they they have done it, and apparently they're doing it again. The FBI has put out a warning that that they're definitely uh, we should definitely uh, not have the uh, the the ballot the ballot uh, box and and the electronic systems uh, connected to the internet uh, during the 2020 election because there, there's probably going to be election meddling. And my understanding also is that the the election machines, the newer ones in the larger voting districts, especially in the state of California, have a lot of problems. So I would say, hey, the Russians know about this stuff. And so does China. I don't know that China is going to do any election meddling, but Russia, Russia provably has. And no doubt, uh, since this information's out in the public, their agents are picking it up and making plans. And I can only make assumptions from there. It's very, very, uh, very cold war. And I feel like it should, it should definitely be, although COVID-19 is important, um, we're missing out on, on all of the journalism uh, regarding these, what can go wrong with these, these fallible election polls. I'm going to be covering this subject more next week when I'll have a guest talker on who's an expert. And he's going to talk about uh, how to foolproof election polls. So that'll be something interesting. If you want to tune in next week at 6 p.m. on Sunday, I'll, I'll be talking about that for the whole hour. Uh, this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about the COVID-19 and a lot about Super Tuesday, but I'm not getting callers and I'm running out of material here. So I'm going to go to another station break and... I'm going to give out the station number. It's 425-373-5527 and 888-298-5569. And if anyone would like to call in and talk about uh, Super Tuesday, uh, their opinions about the front runners, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, uh, if you'd like to talk about candidate Donald Trump, our president, that'll be great. If you have anything to say about uh, my hypothesis that I gave out uh, regarding using the blue scorpion venom uh, as a potential treatment for COVID-19. I'd like to hear about that. If you'd like to debunk me, tell me all about it. It's just a thought that I wanted to give out. And I'm going to station break. Do you want me to hop on there with you? I mean, just if you're running out of pubs. Yeah, I need <clears throat> I needed more material. I just I, I guess I I need I need I need to I need to time I need to read this and time this out because I I I, I thought I would get a few calls and it was going to fill up and it's not. And so I don't I don't have material for the whole hour. Yeah, it's only the second week. Um, once you get the promo stuff on the website, once we get a promo playing, you probably get more awareness. It's just people don't know it. I mean, even if they listen to the station, you know, it's only the second week. So yeah, um, I definitely over prepare for these next couple weeks. Okay, well that's what it's going to be. I'm just I'm just going to have to come with at least at least eight pages, and then if I if I get calls, then I'll just I'll start editing that up. Um, yeah, I'm I just don't have the material to keep talking. Um, let's see what else I can find. Hello, listeners of KKNW, that's 1150 on your AM dial, here on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. And if you want to know who is tops and home organizing... I'm going to play a station promo just to give you a little more time. Right. Yeah, Seattle go ahead. Home organizing Wiz. That's Seattle Home Organizing Wiz at 206-430-0240. And you'll be impressed by the courteous and hardworking staff. But yeah, if you need some support, I can definitely jobs, chime in if you want. As well as one-time appointments, right, well. weekly and bi-monthly...
Hi, this is Susan Harmon inviting you to join me every Friday, noon to 1 p.m. Pacific time, for the Susan Harmon Hour. I'm always curious and I enjoy discussing a wide array of interesting and provocative subjects with fascinating and erudite. How many calls should I be expecting for a show like this? It's really hard to know, you know, with that time. All right. Well, next yeah, week I'm right? I'm going to expect no calls, and if I get any, I guess, I guess what three to four minutes is that is that pretty for the length of for the length of a call? Yeah, I would say at least. Yeah. All right. I I've, I've got to have this timed better, and and that'll then I'll be doing a better yeah. job. Are you ready? Good evening, this is Matthew Melton, and this is Matthew Melton's Democracy Show. Thank you for joining in on KKNW, 1150 AM. And we're talking about the COVID-19 state of emergency in the state of Washington and Super Tuesday. What a couple of topics. Well, those are the major topics in mainstream media, and that's what I'm here to talk about each and every Sunday at 6 p.m. Thank you for joining in. And I wanted to, to talk a little bit about uh, candidate Pete Buttigieg, um, a Super Tuesday uh, uh, competitor. A, a, he, was, he was there, uh, and although he did not uh, do very well, he was the first openly gay American, a, a married gay American to, that I am aware of that was in a uh, U.S. Uh, presidential campaign uh, as far as as far as being in a primary, um, pretty pretty historical. I didn't know he was gay until after he dropped out, so I didn't know that much about that candidate. But uh, was Elizabeth Warren potentially also the first lesbian? That's a good question. I. She did make a statement about um, disappointing many young girls, and I was a little bit perplexed about that. Uh, she said, now all of those poor little girls are going to have to wait another four years. Uh, that's fine if she is a lesbian. Uh, she can come out of the closet if she is a lesbian. Uh, that's, that's a very historical thing that, that a gay or a lesbian is... Uh, running in a in a primary in the United States of America, and I, I would say that this shows that America is becoming a more liberal country. This just wouldn't have happened in the 1980s, for instance. Uh, definitely not 10 years earlier, and and just out of out of the question 10 years before that. So to to hear about any any one who is uh, Homosexual in an American uh, uh, presidential primary is, is pretty pretty newsworthy, pretty exciting, and I'm I'm uh, happy to to have seen uh, gay candidates running for our for office. Uh, they felt that they were good enough, and and uh, good for them. I think they did they did good. They. They got out there, they campaigned, and it was Super Tuesday, and who knows what to expect. I'm a spectator, as all of you are, and I don't know most of what's happening behind closed doors. If I did, then I guess I'd be very famous, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. So, if anyone has anything to say, uh, are there any... Elizabeth Warren uh, supporters out there who would like to call in and talk about Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I was planning to attend her rally uh, in Seattle, and I was busy, and I didn't think she was going to make it. So I talked to someone who did go there, and uh, she she said it was it was a good rally. Uh, apparently, uh, Elizabeth Warren is a very good speaker, and. And uh, that, that's, I guess, that's uh, one of the bottom lines. And in, in being a campaigner, if you if you can't get out and, and speak to an audience, then you're not going to be in in an American, uh, a big American race. Uh, you'll 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 be you'll be 
either either sticking to the sidelines or, or running for some small office in city government. But uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, uh, put her name in, in, in big politics, uh, a very, very uh, politically savvy woman who got out there and, and uh, made her bid for uh, the highest office in the land. And I have to respect her for that. Um, still a little bit upset that she had called frontrunner Bernie Sanders a bully. Uh, don't know how you feel about that. If you'd like to call in and talk about that, I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say. 425-373-5527. Um, how do you feel about our front-running candidate's uh, sexuality? Are you offended by gay political candidates? And uh, we're in the we're in the 20, 2020s now, and 21st century for the last 20 years. Are you are you feeling more liberal and more accepting of gay candidates, or should our races be built primarily of heterosexuals uh, who who are married and and are career oriented uh, men as opposed to to uh, female gender uh, potentially homosexual and in the closet or well this election we had this this primary we had one male who was uh, out of the closet and he made it to Super Tuesday. Interested in hearing from you? If you're listening and you'd like to call in, uh, you can al always try our number in Western Washington. That's toll free, 888-298-5569. And this is 11.50 AM, KKNW. Talking about Super Tuesday, talking about some of the different candidates, uh, their, their sexual orientations, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Pete Buttigieg is an openly gay and also married uh, politician. How do you feel about that? I'm okay with it, but everyone has an opinion. If you'd like to call in, let's, let's talk about it. Is he someone who should be in politics? Uh, apparently, he, he has been a successful politician. And uh, potentially, he was running just because he's making a name for himself uh, in the history books and wants to run for a different office in his home state. Uh, that was suggested to me. And I, I, I can I can see that. That's, 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 that's a good possibility. He may not have... Uh, thought that he was going to do well, but why not run anyways? He's going to build a name for himself in politics by running for the president's office, and potentially, if he ever wanted to run for a higher office in his home state, he can. He has all of that advertisement that he was in, in, in the Super Tuesday primary events. So, back to... Uh, Back to Senator Sanders, candidate Bernie Sanders. I am following him. I I'm 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 pro Bernie. I'm still pro Bernie. I hope that he continues to to keep up the backbone and doesn't feel like he needs to concede the race if Joe Biden is a is 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 remains neck and neck, and that's that's what it's looking like. Um, potentially, uh, Michael Bloomberg's coming in with his billions of dollars uh, and joining Joe Biden's camp, and he's 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 got to remain a front runner. So, is Bernie Sanders going to hang in there, or is Bernie Sanders going to concede? That's what we'll be watching in the next three major political events, next one being on March 15th. And if you're interested in calling, I have two minutes left. Uh, this is 11.50 a.m. KKNW. 
uh, Matthew Melton's Democracy Show, talking about Super Tuesday and the COVID-19 and blue scorpion venom, which is a treatment that's used for cancer and also for pain in Cuba. It's available in America. Uh, it's sold under the brand name of Vitatax, and I've found one example of that. One, one, one of those for sale online was $195. So it looks like I'm going to wrap up this show. I'm not getting calls, and I'm getting to the bottom of the hour. And thank you for listening, Seattle. I appreciate all of my listeners, and I'm happy to be here each and every Sunday to talk about the subjects of mainstream media. Um, we'll be talking a lot more about the primaries and candidates Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, and maybe we'll be hearing more about Senator Amy Klobuchar. So tune in next Sunday, and I will be taking calls and talking about the next major uh, uh, political events in the primaries. Thank you for listening, and go ahead and go to break. Well, I'm going to say that was harder than the first one. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. on KCNW. That's 1150 on your AM dial for live Made in America Alternative Talk Radio at its finest. Do you like my venue of Alternative Talk? Be a sponsor in a non-traditional sense. Please find my account on GoFundMe and Kickstarter. Okay. A self-funded show host. So I'm wrapped up. Like uh, it's in a small way. All the, the end of my hour. And... I'm going to go ahead and end this YouTube. And more hours of live Thanks for joining me. And uh, so you're, what you what you witnessed is my second night in live talk radio. Um, I was a little, getting a little bit stressed out there. You may have noticed. Um, hopefully in the future shows, I'll be getting a lot of calls to fill up the time. But as for the next show, I'll be more prepared with a lot more material. Thanks for joining me.